James Fenimore Cooper brings you thrilling tales of excitement. Blazing action on the early American frontier. Stirring adventures filled with the daring and courage of Hawkeye, first of the Long Rifles, and his blood brother, Chingachgook, last of the Mohicans. before we left Fort Pitt. That's probably the work of some smart-alecky prankster. It ain't no prank, stranger. Your good wife's got some sense. The plague struck Marstown, something fierce. I volunteered to stand out here come rain or shine and warn folks. But we planned on settling in Marstown. <laughs> You're welcome to try. But once you get inside the stockade, they'll put you and that wagon of yours to work, moving the dead. Well, Amy, there, there's just as much opportunity in Allentown, and that ain't far. Much obliged. Minute, friends. I just got through warning the folks in that wagon. Warning? Something we should be interested in? If and you value your life. The Black Death's in Morristown. People are dying like flies. Both me and that sign there have been set out to turn strangers away. In carrying out your merciful duties, might be you've spoken to a man who asked us to meet him in Morristown. Simon Gertie. Ain't nobody alive in Morristown answering to that name. Now, good day to both of you. And just pray that the mile of air between here and Morristown hasn't spotted your lungs with the plague. Air never bothered our lungs. Maybe a lead ball in your back would bother them some. I warned you, peaceful-like. We got enough to take care of in the settlement without adding strangers. Now get. get to Morristown. My brother think he not speak with straight tongue? I've never heard of the plague striking hereabouts, Chingachgook, unless it was brought here by that renegade, Simon Gertie. Many soldiers chase Simon Gertie for many moons. We follow for a long time. He is like wind, disappear fast. Why my brother think he is here? There are no soldiers stationed anywhere around here. Gertie and his Senecas could find plenty of food and comfortable quarters in a settlement like that. Take a look at that guardian of the road. He's not only disagreeable, he's a mean killer, the sort that Gertie likes to have around him. But what if it is like he say? There is much sickness in town. Well, in that case, Chingachgook, instead of hunting down an outlaw, we'll be hunting for a doctor or an undertaker. I tell you, as sure as my name is John Udley, as soon as we bend our knee to any form of tyranny, we shall have to learn to live on our knees. We shall become slaves instead of free men. But Simon Gertie and his Indians, they've been taking scalps up and down the frontier for more years than I can remember. We can't stand up again them. You're quite right, Mr. Rashley. Standing up to Simon Gertie and his men might cost some of our lives, but preserve all of our liberties. Gertie and 
Seneca's they promised they'll get out of Morristown when the troops arrive. If and when the troops arrive. If we call ourselves men, we'll run them out of town right now. You make a big noise with your mouth, storekeeper. And the rest of you spend too much time listening to speeches. Go home. You stay, storekeeper. Time you learn to keep your tongue from flapping. Look at those Senecas. Just as I figured, the only plague that's hit Morristown is Simon Gertie. We sneak by them easy. Let's go in the back of the trading post, talk to Audley, see what's going on. Think maybe you've learned a little lesson now, storekeeper? If it's slavery you're trying to teach me, I'll never learn. But maybe we ought to have another try. School's out, mister. Okay. Chingachgook. Good day, Mr. Audley. How'd you two get into Morristown? Someone forgot to pull in the welcome mat. Where's Simon Gertie? If and you live long enough, maybe you'll find out. He's at Simmons, Captain Hawkeye. Him and those cutthroat Senecas of his and have taken over the whole settlement. Look out! <laughs> It's good. Oh, but they go straight to Gertie. I'm sure they will. How many Senecas does Gertie have around here? About a dozen of them. Only a handful? You settlers are letting them run all over you without doing anything about it? That handful's got the backing of a whole army of Senecas. Six hundred of them scalp-hungry varmints camped over to Mirror Lake, five miles south here. This calls for the delicate hand of a surgeon. My brother mean we go easy. We've got to go mighty easy getting Mr. Gertie away from his companions. How many times I told you Simon Gertie don't like to be interrupted when he's eating? This is important. It better be very important. You come spoiling my digestion with news that ain't worth a hoot and a holler. We got visitors. Keep your tongue flapping. Friends of the storekeeper, oddly. How many of them are there? Two. There were three of you. Not enough to handle the likes of Hawkeye and Chingachgook. How do they get past the guards? How do they get away with half the stuff they do? I've got to agree with you. Them two are worth half a dozen Senecas. But maybe facing up to 600 will tell a different story. My pa, bless him, used to say that putting hot vittles into a man is the only way to keep the wheels in his brain turning sharp. I'm afraid it'll take more than a meal to help us figure out how to get Simon Gertie separated from his engines. You and Chingachgook got into Morristown. Couldn't you get out the same way and bring back troops? The nearest fort's more than two weeks' march, and that's in good weather. Besides, there aren't more than 50 or 60 soldiers garrisoned there. Oh, it's dark, no moon. Maybe we steal Gertie from cabin. Moon or no moon, those Senecas can see in the dark as good as we can. Simon, Gertie, and the engines, they're coming. I think it'd be better all around if we weren't here when they walk in. Oh, me hungry. We stay and fight Gertie and Seneca dog. <laughs> then we eat. Now, the food would be cold by the time you finish fighting. Besides, we can't make a battlefield out of a man's home. We'll get in touch with you tonight. Where'll you be? You can't tell what you don't know, Audley. But it won't be too far away. It's customary to knock, Mr. Gertie. Not when old friends come a visit. Then have them come in. 
Not expecting it. We was just fixing to have supper. Hmm. Tasty. Mighty tasty. Well, might be you'll come over and cook me up a snack sometime. The only thing I'd ever cook for you would be a pot of poison sumac. <laughs> All the orderlies have a habit of clacking tongues. Blount told me he ran into a couple other old friends of mine. Hawkeye and Chingachgook. I figured they'd be visiting here. They've been and gone. Where? They didn't say. Leave my pa alone. Leave him alone. Joe, take the bread. Ma, Pa! And we'll keep him with us till Hawkeye and that Mohican come in and give themselves up. But we don't know where they are. And you best find out and give them the message. And if anybody tries making any trouble, my Senecas might decide to take your young'un along with them come spring. Last time two Senecas ain't getting you out of Morristown. With you along, we get out. Right out of the capital for your trial. Come on. It's like a visitation of the plagues of the ancient pharaohs. We should have taken up the sword when Gertie and his Indians descended on us like locusts. We should have listened to you, John. Hindsight's always better than foresight. He's an instrument of Satan punishing us for not standing up to him. We just dropped by to tell you Mr. Simon Gertie will be leaving Morristown. Pick up a few supplies for our trip to the capital. <laughs> You'll be laughing out of the other side of your face, Gertie. The laugh's on you, Hawkeye. I'm wagering these there settlers want to extend their hospitality a mite longer. There isn't a man or woman in Morristown wouldn't give half they own to see you dancing from the gallows. That shows you don't know how much I come to mean to these good folk. Correct, storekeeper? Are you all daft? Gertie's under arrest. As soon as I can get him out of here and on the trail to the capital, those Senecas will fade into the wilderness and you'll be free again. There's some prices a man won't pay, even for liberty. That's just what I figured. Storekeeper, I reckon he forgot to deliver my message to Hawkeye. What message? They've taken our children as hostages. Why, you black renegade. You'll take us to him before we leave. In my own good time. My Senecas are taking good care of them kids. Mighty good. And if anything should happen to me, why, they aren't going to be too particular about what size scalps hang from their belts. No. You hang from gallows with no scalp. I had more heat. And they'll be lamenting in every house in this settlement. Turn him loose, Chickatcook. The storekeeper ain't giving you the rest of the message. Them kids are up for trading. You two in exchange for them. You're not a man of your word, Gertie. You two are worth more to me than a parcel of sniveling brats. Turning you over to my tribe of Senecas would prove that their white chief is the greatest warrior that ever lived.
I reckon we have much choice, Chingachgook. Gertie, you have those children brought here unharmed, and you and your Senecas clear out of this settlement, and we'll go with you. Them two braves guarding your cabin told us you was prisoner. I reckon when they got knocked on their heads, their eyesight got blurred. In a couple of days, when we visit the rest of the tribe, we'll see how long they can live without yelling for mercy. Just keep right on being smart, and no harm will come to your kids. But you promised you'd release them in exchange for Hawkeye and Chingachgook. Sure I did. Only I didn't say when. You filthy spawn of the devil! He said I could feed the prisoners. Sort of a last meal, huh? <coughs> Smells nourishing. Yeah, that'll give them strength when they try running the Seneca gauntlet. Them engines like a man to linger under their torture sticks. Seeing as they won't let me untie you, I'll have to spoon feed you. I hope you don't mind. Well, being helpless, I uh, don't see how else we can object. Just so as I can keep an eye on you. Is this Gertie's idea or yours? It was mine, but Gertie thinks it's a big joke having me cookie up some victuals. Because it's like getting sheep prime and fat before they lead them to slaughter. Did you get your boy back home yet? No, those savages are still holding all the children. Gertie, never speak with straight tongue. Sure cook up good grub, uh, Miss Audley. Lean over and feed Chingachgook. Keep your ears open. What are you hatching up? She's feeding Chingachgook. You got eyes. The only sound I want to hear is the chomping of his jaws. <laughs> Make sure you leave some for me. Spoon, the only cutlery you got with you? I didn't dare take a chance on bringing anything else. I knew you were being guarded. You have knife. Yeah, maybe we can persuade him to lend it to us. Get ready to make a fuss, Mrs. Audley. Any kind of a fuss. I don't understand. They're trying to escape. Now, how could we with our hands tied like this? Well, you're not about to while I got this gun on you. Did you do this? Turn around, let me look at your hands. I said turn around before I blast it. Good squaw. You long-eared donkey. Too bad you didn't split your skull wide open. You got the back of the town under guard, like I told you. And them two are still in Morristown somewhere. Sure, the Otley place. That woman must have scrambled your brains. It's them kids. Okay, and that Mohican would try and figure out some way to get my whole card away from me. Get the Indians, bring them over to the storehouse, and don't dally. Guard the corner. You two braves keep your eyes peeled at the back of the storehouse. And remember, no shooting. I've already sent word to the tribe I'm bringing them in alive. That Gertie's smarter than I thought. He's keeping one step ahead of us. My brother is right. Gertie moved fast. He is bad medicine. Like plague. I think you've got the answer, Chingachgook. 
What you mean, my brother? Well, Gertie's the one who spread the word that the plague was here in Morristown. The way things are, I wouldn't want to give him the reputation of a liar. But everybody know he speak with crooked tongue. Maybe not this time. You look terrible sick, Chingachgook. No, my brother. Me feel fine. Me hungry, but feel fine. And you're gonna be sick. In a little while, you're gonna be the first victim of the plague in Morristown. You're gonna have a fever. Your face will break out. You'll be moaning, groaning. You'll look awful. Well, not yet. Come on. Don't you worry. Hawkeye and Chingachgook will get us out of here. You'll see. Get away from that window, you brats. Hawkeye or nobody will get you out of here. Until I'm ready to let you loose. Plague, you're still my prisoners. That may be a matter of opinion, Gertie, seeing as how your courageous Senecas have deserted you. You forget I still got a whole tribe out by Mirror Lake. If I know anything about Senecas, when they get word of the plague, they'll take off and won't stop till they're the other side of the Alleghenies. <laughs> breathe smells a mite sweeter now, Hawkeye. And that's the way it should stay in a free country. Just before you go, Chingachgook, you promised to tell us your secret of scaring off Gertie's tribe. Oh, it's not secret. Me use clay from earth, juice of berries on face. Rest is fear in heart of Seneca. Well, goodbye, Audley. Bye. Mrs. Audley, Paul. Join us again at this same time next week for another of James Fenimore Cooper's gripping tales of the early American frontier. Another exciting adventure of Hawkeye and his blood brother, Chingachgook, last of the Mohicans.